Hello everyone, uh, I'm Amma Zirodopada and in this session we are going to deal with the uh, applications of differential equations of first order. So far we have seen uh, more than dozen methods of solving uh, differential equations of first order and degree also. So in this case coming to applications, see differential equations are used in uh, many disciplines like electrical and electronics, mechanical, chemical, and whatnot, uh, metallurgy, like different branches are there. So in all disciplines, we use this uh, differential equations. So in order to apply the differential equations in that particular domain, we should know some basic terminology of that particular discipline also. Otherwise, we cannot apply uh, simply differential equations in that. So that is the big gap now in uh, research industry also. Why? Because uh, the people who knows the theory, in particular, let us say chemical engineering, they cannot use uh, 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 differential equations in their in their problem. In that case, they have to borrow help from uh, a mathematician. So this is the big gap now. What we can observe in uh, present uh, research industry. So uh, what uh, my point is like, whatever the discipline you are from, whatever the domain or branch you are from, you should know the mathematics at least to uh, up to some mark to level you have to know so coming to i what i do is in this case i have three examples i, I will take in three disciplines the one is electrical and electronics electrical and electronics one uh, some basic concepts i will teach and we will take an example and the second thing second one is mechanical Third one is chemical. So like this, if you take many branches are there, you can apply in all the branches, like, you know, physics, chemistry, like, you know, individual subjects also, you can apply uh, uh, differential equations. So these are the three generally we see in uh, mathematics textbook. So this three basics, uh, theory and uh, problem we will cover. So now straight away, firstly, electrical and electronics we will deal. So in this, generally, there are three basic elements coming to electrical and electronics. Three basic elements are there. They are, are called resistor. Having a property called resistancy. The second one I do this. What I do is Second one is inductor. I will explain here about inductor. And the next one is capacitor. So, if you see, all together, if, if you think, generally the resistor is represented with this symbol, inductor is represented with this symbol, capacitor is represented with this symbol. Actually, there are the three fundamental formulas are there. If you know that, in case of direct current, Ohm's law, you know that V is equal to IR is the one formula we apply. In case of, you know, direct current, we use this form. V is equal to L into DI by DT. And uh, another equation is V is equal to 1 by C integral of I into DT. But in case of when it is, you know, current and voltage, depending upon time, 
it means alternating current. In that case, we have to write the equations like this. V is equal to R into I of T because current is depending upon time. V is equal to L into D I of T by DT. Here also current is depending on time. Uh, v is equal to 1 by C integral of I of T into DT. Frankly, if you know these three equations, at least if you by heart, you can solve mathematics. It means a mathematician can solve whatever the problem you have given. At least, but little thing is how to write the equation in a given circuit. If you know that, if you know that, you can directly pro solve the problem. But that much, you know, bluntly doing uh, some applications or problem is not good. That is the reason why you have uh, covered basics of electrical electronics in your first year engineering. Whatever the domain you are from, you have to know at least basics of each domain. That is the fundamental reason why they will give. So now this equations, what I'm telling is in order to do the problem, these three equations are enough, but we are still reading the basics. So firstly, let me see what is resistor and what is uh, how, what is the property of that like? So coming to R, resistor have the property called resistency. Resistance is simply, it will resist the current. It will resist the flow of current. So flow of current. Coming to inductor. It has the property called inductancy. See what it will do? It will resist flow of current. It will resist, this one also resist, change of current, change of current. It See, both are looking like same. Here, just it simply uh, resists the flow of current in case of resistor. In inductancy, what it will happen is, it means resist means it will decrease like in inductor, I am telling that it will, uh, uh, it will uh, oppose change of current and it will resist change of current. It means if current is increasing, this inductor will uh, make it, will try to make it decrease. If the current is decreasing, this inductor will try to make it increase. That is the, uh, you know, difference between uh, resistor and uh, inductor. Coming to capacitor. See, it has a property called capacitance. What capacitance will do is it will it will oppose or it will resist the change in voltage. It will oppose change in voltage. Like you know, the basic formula is like uh, Q is equal to CV. I is, uh, I is equal to dQ by dt. You know that I rate of flow of charge is called current. dQ by dt. It means C into dV by dt. It means it will resist. This also will resist change in voltage. Change in voltage means again, same concept. When the voltage is increasing in a circuit, it will try to make it decrease. When the voltage is decreasing, it will try to make it increase. That is generally what resistor, inductor and capacitor will do. But one more concept that I have been covered already in the basics class, Remember, R is a separate element called active component or active element. Sorry, uh, R is actually passive element. These two are actually we called active. Ideally, ideally, why we call this them is active is because they have the ability to store the energy. This L and C are called energy storing elements. Energy storing elements. I told you when energy storing element like comes, it means intrinsically, intrinsically they, they can store some energy. I mean, they have the, that nature like, so when there is a, matter of energy storing then 
automatically i told you you in differential equations you will get an order like how many energy storing components are there that much order you will get in that particular equation then one more thing is comes like non linearity will come here non linearity things will come here it means differential terms comes only when there are energy storing elements like l and c or suppose if the circuit is having only r then there is no matter of differential equations there is no matter of differential equations when coming to l and c in any circuit then you will have a differential equation or a differential components that is the you know uh, uh, fundamental of uh, bit, uh, difference between r l and c and uh, l and c also can be called as parasitic elements l and c also can be called as parasitic elements why why uh, we call it as parasitical means generally you know ideally speaking l symbol is this but l also have some resistance so that also we represent so when the component have a property of other element then we call it as parasitic element coming to capacitor also capacitor is this some capacitance let us say 10 farads here also let us say 10 henrys but it has some resistance also like 10 ohms now capacitor also having some resistance in built so that is what we call uh, let us say 10 ohms that's why inductor and capacitor are called as parasitic elements parasitic elements means the element which is having the property of other other type of element that is what we called parasitic element so now so we know that we understand r l and c and uh, in case of r there are no differential terms coming to l and c when inductor and capacitor comes in any circuit then automatically differential terms will come and non linearity will come and differential uh, equations will come like so now we will see uh, i told you the basic three equations i have given that only we use mostly uh, before that i just explain about uh, current voltage these are the two terms so first charge you know what is charge a physical property of the material or a body it is a physical property of a body which is influenced by a force let us say a body is there it has some charge now q represent with charge so it will be influenced by a force it will be influenced by a force when you keep in when you keep in electromagnetic field so actually we are the bodies like big big bodies i mean even we every matter every material in the universe definitely will be influenced by a some force that is called electromagnetic field because we have bo our body is made up of so many particles so definitely that particles will have some charge so we are all influenced by some force so that is what we what generally mean is charge but you may ask like electron generally in our case like in electrical engineering in this uh, particular uh, discipline electron will be experienced by some force electron have negative charge called minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs so this this is the charge of electron and it, this uh, it, this also will be influenced by a force so definitely electron will have some mass otherwise it will not be influenced by any force like you know that 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 28 grams see this much small mass very 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 small mass is influenced by a some force in that case our bodies like the physical bodies what we see in the universe definitely will have will be influenced by some forces so uh, this is mass of electron so this is what about charge now current current is 
rate of flow of charge. It means, see, I am operating like d by dt, operating on q. It means with respect to time, if q changes, with respect to time, if q changes, it means it is, if uh, uh, q is charge is moving with respect to time, moving means automatically time is the concern. I told you time is a universal independent parameter like. It means all other parameters will depend on time, but time will not depend on any other parameter like. So, rate of flow of charge is called current. So, now one more equation is, one more uh, uh, term is voltage. Voltage means generally the work done on unit positive charge to bring it from infinite distance to very close to the body. Let us say a body is there, have some charge. One unit charge is there, it means plus one coulomb. So if you want to bring this from infinite distance to close to this body, you have to do some work because same charges will ripple each other. Opposite charges will attract each other. Even in case of magnetic, magnetic magnets or magnetic field also, same thing will happen. So, in order to bring this plus one Q Coulomb charge to bring to this body, you have to do some work. That work over a charge is called your voltage. So now, finally, Ohm's law, I tell you, with that uh, theory can be finished, then we can directly solve your problem like. Now it is Ohm's law. Ohm's law is actually in any circuit. Let us say having uh, R, L, C. It means three basic elements is there. And you have given some voltage, like supply. It will have definitely, it is closed circuit, so it will have some current. Now the current in any circuit is directly proportional to the voltage applied across it. Or the current in any element is directly proportional to the voltage applied across it. But remember at constant temperature, the Ohm's law, we generally call it at constant temperature. Then I is equal to V into 1 over R. R is called resistance that we have already seen. What is resistance called? V is equal to I into R. This is what we call Ohm's law. The same way, this is in case of resistor. Remember, in case of inductor, the equation is voltage is equal to L into di of T by dt. In case of capacitor, we have seen V is equal to 1 by C integral of I of T dt. These are the three equations we use in the upcoming uh, example. So now what is that example? I roughly take some values. I'm giving some voltage. See, so far we have covered theory only, just a little theory in order to do, do the mathematical problem. Generally, if you are from electrical and electronics engineering or something like if you want to learn more in uh, uh, electrical and electronics engineering concepts or about R and L and C, generally we can uh, go very depth. You can go up to Maxwell's equations also. You can go up to EMF concepts like J is equal to sigma E like that. So that is very depth uh, subject it is. But coming to mathematics, these are the three equations are enough in order to solve the mathematical problem. Now what I do is, I will take a circuit. I am giving some source voltage. I take some resistance, it's a drain. It means it will consume energy. And L, inductor also will consume energy, but and it can store also. Let us say 10 volts I'm giving, 10 ohms resistor, 0 0.1 Henry, because inductance is measured in Henry's, resistance is measured in ohms, capacitance is measured in farads. So this is the circuit what, I, what they generally they will give they will ask to solve this problem. 
firstly in order to solve this problem one one uh, basic thing you have to understand that is called a la kirchhoff's voltage law like it is you know law of conservation of energy algebraic sum of voltages algebraic sum of voltages in a closed circuit is equal to is equals to zero what does it mean is you know the source which is giving voltages is equal to the drains r l and r and l which takes the voltage which consumes the voltage it means sum of the source voltages is equal to sum of the drain voltages because v is the source r and l are drains it means this is the source these two are drains for suppose if it is giving 10 volts let us say it is plus 10 they are drain right so they take voltage so minus 10 i am representing 10 minus 10 sum of voltage is equal to zero this is what generally uh, kirchhoff's voltage law like you i told you you a universal law of energy uh, energy ne neither be created nor be destroyed it will consume one pound to another pound like so the same way here how much the 10 i am giving the 10 it is consumed by r and l that is the simple equation like now how to write this equation how to write the equation so here voltage source is giving some voltage right so plus 10 because it is the source minus so definitely current will be there in a closed circuit what is the voltage across resistor according to ohm's law v is equal to r into i of t v is equal to ir so r means 10 i of t why i kept minus here because it is a drain so algebraic sum it means plus minus you have to differentiate otherwise your uh, problem will be wrong and this is also drain that's why i'm keeping minus what is the voltage across inductor the first uh, starting equation we have written l into di t d i of t by dt l is 0 0.1 d i of t by dt is equal to zero very simple here actually v is equal to r into i of t that is called what we ohm's law we have seen v is equal to l into d i of t by dt this is the what equation we have seen in case of inductor so this is the equation now this equation i have to solve this equation i have to solve so 10 you take that side so automatically minus 10 it will be so it will become 0 0.1 di of t by dt plus 10 into i of t is equal to 10 you multiply with 10 automatically this uh, uh, 0 0.1 will go away or you can buy you can uh, divide uh, with 0 0.1 so equation will become d i of t by dt plus 100 into i of t is equal to 100 so now it is looking like see dy by dx plus p y is equal to some q p comma q are functions of uh, x but here it is constants so you can apply this formula actually there is another method to solve this type of problems that will come in the you know next uh, videos like uh, that's uh, linear uh, higher order differential equations like by using that uh, method we can use easily solve this type of problems but uh, so far we have covered uh, more than dozen methods as i said in that uh, there are some methods we have covered so this will fall under that method that's why we ha i have i'm using that one only this is called linear Leibniz formula so here what is p value is 100 q value is 100 so direct solution we know that y into e power integration of p dx 
is equal to integration of q into e power integration of p into dx. So, what is the integration factor? e power integration of p how much? 100 into dx means here dt because our question is i in terms of t. Dependent variable is i, independent variable is t. So, integration factor is this. So, e power 100 t. So, y means i, i of t. e power integration of p dx is e power 100 t is equal to integration of q value is how much? 100 e power integration of p dx. It means uh, e power 100 t only plus some constant i of t e power 100 t is equal to 100 anyhow it's constant so e power 100 t is e power 100 t only over 100 will be cancelled so plus some constant so i of t is e power 100 t by e power 100 t one only plus c into e to the power minus 100 t that's it this is real constant anyhow one c into e power minus 100 t this is the equation this is the equation it means this is the solution of the given differential equation not given differential equation we have formed the differential equation out of the given circuit so see in this i is the dependent variable in terms of time so finally i got in terms of time only the way they have given question the same way our answer should be even we have seen so far many methods in that y in terms of x x in terms of t like that here i in terms of t that is the only difference. Once again, the summarization I tell you, because a little uh, as a mathematical uh, mathematician, these type of things like, you know, electrical things are definitely new, I can understand. So only few things we have to understand. That is, see firstly, when the circuit is given, when the circuit is given, you should know how to make or how to form a differential equation. For that, one law I have applied that is called Kirchhoff's voltage law. Algebraic sum of the voltages in a closed circuit is equal to zero. So this is the source, what it is giving like uh, voltage. This is the symbol and uh, these are the drains. So algebraic means source means plus, drain means minus. And how to write the voltage equation in that particular element that you should know. For that, I, I am writing here. For voltage in a resistor, V is equal to R into I of T. For voltage in an inductor, V is equal to L into D, I of T by DT. And in case of capacitor, we have seen already. But anyhow, in this problem, it is not there. So if it is capacitor is also there, that also you have to write voltage equation. 1 by C over integration of I of T DT. So we know what is the voltage, given voltage, and what is the voltage across resistor, what is the voltage across inductor. So simply, I have applied KVL. This is the equation came. Once this equation, if I get it, that's it. I have entered into mathematics. I don't want any other things like what is inductor, what is capacitor, what is I, what is T, nothing. I can simply solve. So that is what we have done so far here till the end. So this is the just little basics of electrical engineering. But if you want to know more and in depth of uh, basic components and the property, uh, their intrinsic nature, as I said, and uh, why this uh, uh, non-linearity comes and the uh, order and degree of differential equation, why it is changing as it is changing number of storing elements. If you want, I am going to upload electrical series of videos so you can see in that. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you all for watching this video.